Hello and welcome. Thank you for popping into my channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, smash that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with anything that you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover and check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's get to it. We are going to look at adding recoil to a React application. The very first thing that we're gonna do here is use npm to create Vite at latest. If you're not using Vite, you definitely need to. I will link to the video in the description that covers Vite basics. There's just no, no comparison. You don't want to be using Create React App anymore. If you disagree, comment below with why, because it's not even comparable. Vite is better in every single way. It's easier in every single way. And there really is no reason to be using Create React App if you have a choice these days. Uh, let's just call this whatever and we're going to have a react application obviously and we'll just use javascript is fine and then we need to move into that directory and do an npm install get all of our packages there and we might as well go ahead and install recoil as well Recoil is pretty cool if you're using a React application. Um, it is definitely beneficial. I highly recommend it. So now that we have that, we can do an npm run dev. Whoops. npm run dev. And we can get our skeleton application up and running. All right, let's get straight to the good stuff. Inside of our source directory, uh, the very first thing that we're going to need to do here is inside of main.jsx where you have your application we're going to do a few things here first let's uh, rename app to component one component one and we'll name this component one We are also going to need to import, import a recoil root, and it should be in brackets, recoil root from recoil. And then we need to wrap our application in th that recoil root. So just inside of the React strict mode, let's add our recoil root and then all of our components for our app our entire app will live inside of that all right we are off to a good start so now in our app.jsx whoops let's go ahead and rename this to you guessed it component one we can update those imports we need to rename the function to component one. We also need to rename the export default to component one. We can get rid of, just get rid of the two p tags out of that file. Let's add plus recoil plus consulting ninja. Like that. We are going to get rid of use state. And what we're going to do instead, let's go ahead and create inside of source. Let's not save these files just yet because we're gonna to need to make some more modifications. Uh, inside of source, let's create a new file called state.js. And inside of state, what we're going to do is we are going to first import add them like that and then while we're here let's go ahead and add selector as well we'll come to that in just a minute and then let's make our first recoil atom so in order to do that we do export const let's call this recoil count we are going to use the same basic demonstration logic we're going to have a count except for instead of using local state, use state, re react, use state, we're going to be using recoil. 
uh, and there's two different kinds of state. There's atoms, well actually there's a few different kinds. There's also atom families and selector families, but uh, those are fairly advanced topics uh, beyond the scope of this video. Uh, we are going to use two types of state. Atoms, which is just a single piece of state, and then we're going to use a selector, which uh, takes in one or more atoms and then derives its state from those, and we'll go through that in just a minute. But the first thing we're going to do is just create an atom, and it's a function that has this object, and it needs a key. The key needs to be unique to your application. Let's just call this count and then a default value if you so need. So just like that. Uh, let's save this file now. And inside of component one, let's go ahead and import use recoil state from recoil. And then we also need to import that particular atom, which we called recoil count. So let's go ahead and do that as well. Recoil count from dot slash state. Now here where we have the old use state already there, what we can do is we can actually just copy this use recoil state and paste that over top of the old use state. But what use recoil state takes as its argument is not the initial value. It's the atom that you create in your state file. So we can copy that recoil count that we're importing there from our state file. And now let's go ahead and give this a save. And back inside of main.jsx, we'll add the rest in just a bit. Let's go ahead and save that. And we can just play with this for now and see what's there. So there we have our count and our button is hooked up. And when I increase this, you'll see it goes up. So pretty cool. That's very similar to what use state already did. But now let's go ahead and copy component one, copy, paste it into the same exact directory, and let's rename this component two. And then we need to update our function. So that function name will be component two. And then the default export needs to be updated as well to component two. Right, and here, let's go ahead and get rid of all of the logos out of here. We don't want that. And let's go ahead and get rid of the H1 as well. Let's just have a paragraph that says, I am from component two. And we can get rid of these imports for the logos. And we are still going to import that same atom and the same state and save that and inside of our main.jsx let's go ahead and bring that new component in so let's import component number two from dot slash component number two and then add that to our jsx just below component number one now i'm going to save this but what you'll notice is uh, i'm not passing there's no props here this component is a standalone component I'm not passing anything, parent, child, anything like that, like you would have to do with use state. Inside of our application now, we have the component number one rendering out the logos and this big H1 with our counter. And when I update the count using that button from component number one, you'll see that component number two is rendered just below and it updates exactly at the same time as component number one. So essentially what you have with recoil the standard atom is basically a piece of use state like like you would have with your regular use state where anytime you update it in one location recoil sneaks over and updates it in the other location as well so you can update in one and the dose changes will be reflected immediately in the other components that are using that piece of state it's very very cool very powerful let's take this one step further Let's add a selector. So inside of our state.js, let's go ahead and create a selector. So let's do an export const, and let's just call this recoil selector. 
And this will be that function that we are importing from recoil. It's similar, but this is a bit different. We still need a key. So we can call this, let's call this count modifier. And then the second item in this object is where things start to change. This is going to be a git. And what this is going to be is a function that takes the git object like that and then we'll go ahead and fat arrow this over and then what we're going to do is take that count so const count equals and we're going to get that value from that atom so we're going to go up here grab the value from that atom and now we can make use of that in this selector and you can do this with as many atoms or selectors that you need uh, in order to derive your state. So this is going to be a pretty straightforward example. Uh, let's just go ahead and return count times two. Like that. Give that a save. And inside of our component two now, let's go ahead and add another piece of state here. Import that. Let's do a const modified count equal to, and in our import, where we're importing use recoil state, let's add use recoil value. And all we're going to do is read the value. That's why we're using use recoil value instead of use recoil state. We're not going to update this at all. From here, we're going to just pull that value in. And then we're going to pass as the parameter here the uh, recoil selector that we created. So we need to add that to our import, recoil selector. And then we can copy and paste that in there. And then inside of our button, uh, we can leave the, the function or remove it completely up to you. But what we want to do here is let's just say Let's add modified count is, and then replace count with modified count. All right, just like that. So let's give that a save. And inside of our application now, you can see that the second value is the first value times two. And if I increase this, it will continue to be. So what the selector is doing is taking the value from the atom that we're getting using that get function and then modifying it in this case just simply timesing it by two and then returning that value now you can get as complicated as you'd like you also can add as many uh, atoms to derive your state as you need you could have another piece of state where the user chooses what the modifier is going to be an input and then get that piece of state out of the atom, so let's just give an example here. Let's say we had another piece of state called modifier, and this was going to be an atom, and let's call this key of modifier, modifier. So let's change this to modified dash count. And this would be a default of whatever you want. And then add that here. So const modifier equal to git modifier. And then you could return count times modifier. So let's go ahead and save that. And inside of component two, let's add our new atom modifier. And we're going to need to copy and paste this. Let's call this mod and set mod. And we are going to be using state. So we want to use recoil state 
And then inside of our div, let's just add an input. Type equal number. And what we want to do here is make the value equal to mod. And then on change, we want to set just like we're doing just like we're doing here. So we can copy the inside of that. Oop, just the inside, not the bracket on the end. And we want to set mod. Uh, we'll need to pass E. Uh, we don't need the additional insides of that. All we want to do is set it to e.target.value. And then close off our input. Go ahead and give that a save. Inside of our state.js, I made a slight mistake here. We can't actually have that be the same name, obviously. So let's just call it a current modifier. Current mod or current mod is fine. Like that. And now we can set. So our current modifier is zero, so two times zero is zero. But if I increase this, uh, you'll see that that goes up exponentially. And so now our selector is pulling in two different pieces of state, the original count and the modifier that the user is choosing, and then returning that modified value here. So that is atoms and selectors basic functionality. I hope that you have found this video helpful and cool. If you did, comment below with your thoughts, like and subscribe, and as always, have a great day.